guys, happy Sunday. I just reapplied a little of this Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45 Anti-Aging. The uh, sunscreen with niacinamide that is a dupe for L to MD UV Clear. I actually like it better than UV Clear. It feels so nice and hydrating going on and it doesn't sting. It does have that pool float smell to it. Um, but I am really enjoying it and have continued using it. It doesn't sting around my eyes or anything. It's, uh, it's a good one and I definitely recommend giving it a whirl. 22 bucks I think I said it was. I think it is for two ounces, so not too bad. Maybe 24, not too bad. Anyways. Also, I had another tube of the Vanny Cream Lip Protectant Sunscreen SPF 30 Water Resistant 80. This is zinc and titanium dioxide only, and then dimethicone as a skin protectant. So it's very, very good for dry, chapped lips and for sun protection simultaneously. That's always a delicate balance with a lot of the lip products that have SPF in them. If they're chemical, I find they can be drying because the other ingre inactive ingredients that are added to kind of stabilize the chemical filters can be irritating and drying. Whereas this zinc with the dimethicone, it's really nice. It is a little casty, but honestly, it, it blends in pretty well onto the lips. So yeah, recommend that. I also like the Elta MD one. The Elta MD one uh, has less of a cast than this, but this is pretty pretty good and no no irritating uh, fragrance or anything like that. Oh, you guys, that Rogue Schmitz has uh, converted his uh, irritating deodorant into a body wash. This bergamot and lime one. Go back to my TJ Maxx video where I pointed this uh, deodorant out as being likely problematic. Look in the comments. There are so many comments of people saying, oh my gosh, I used that deodorant and it gave me the worst rash of my life. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I don't even need to look at the ingredients to tell you guys, avoid this. Although, all that aside, I bet the coconut pineapple smells fantastic. Lily of the Valley probably smells good too. They probably all smell good, but they're gonna dissolve your uh, epidermal barrier and deposit a, uh, a film of uh, irritating fragrance. Happy Sunday, everyone. Good morning. Your outfit looks nice. Thank you, it's very really comfortable. Is that from Ann Taylor Law? Looks like a... Nay, old Navy. Oh, that's really cute. And this was from Target. I had it. got this last year. That's not a new day. Um, yeah. Right? I just did oatmeal this morning. And fruit. Yeah, with some maple syrup. Looks good. <laughs> what did you get? I got um, cauliflower rice <laughs> and oatmeal. <laughs> did you see the purple cauliflower? That I did, yeah. I was tempted. But it was raw. Uh, I like to have yeah. it steamed. And in the morning. <laughs> I know. They mu they know I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. It's like let's let's brighten your world this morning. I didn't know about that tabouli. I really didn't. Yeah, I got rice, cauliflower, some dried blueberries, some a few peanuts sprinkled on there, some cubes of tofu. There's a little bit of regular oatmeal in there as well. Um, I also sprinkled sesame. They had white sesame seeds. I sprinkled that on the rice cauliflower and I dusted cinnamon on it. It's a really good combination. Cinnamon and uh, the white sesame seeds on mm. the cauliflower. I know it sounds odd, but it's kind of a Middle Eastern delight. I love adding cinnamon to savory things. It's really good. I like sesame in anything. Cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. but you said yeah. sesame Yeah, yeah I want to try making uh, tahini sometime. I wonder if it's hard to make. I don't know. Comment below on if you have a good tahini brand. Um, I, I have never really purchased it before. But I see people use it to make granola. Instead of oil, they use tahini. Oh. I think that would be better. Because I don't like m most granolas are too, <laughs> here I go again, greasy. They're too, they're too oily, but I think with tahini it would give it a nice nutty flavor. I think when you start to take out or reduce the oil in your diet, mm -hmm. you really notice when things have oil. Yeah, oil. it's overkill. It's like salt. Yeah, yeah. Reduce the salt. I think so too. Hey little boy, did you miss us? Watching cartoons. 
How was Curious George? Oh my, what That's is his that? favorite show. He likes Curious George. That's what we put on before we leave. But really, he he likes his toy box the most. <laughs> I think he took a nap while we were yeah, here. Yeah, he likes to nap when we're not here because then when he's good and rested to, to pasture when we get back and play. Yeah, he does a good job at that. I'm going to pull out all my toys now that you guys are here. Downward dog. <laughs> oh, Downward Ty dog, Ty Since he went to the spa, he's super fluffy. And soft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, last night he jumped up on my lap and wanted to cuddle like a little teddy bear. Like a little teddy bear. Aww. Aww, I love you, Tybee. You have so much love to give. You soft little head. He's got the softest fur. He feels like a stuffed animal. He doesn't feel like a dog. Yes. Oh, yes. Massage my, massage my face, please. Aww. 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 You're just being a ham for the for the camera, aren't you? Hey everybody. Hey everybody. <laughs> Show everybody your new Costco shoes. I saw these at Costco and I almost got them and then I come over here and I see my mom got a pair. I'm not going to put them on. Very they are Bob's by Skecher, and they've got a little squishy um, arch support inside. Oh, I didn't see that feature when I was eyeing them at Costco. Those are um, cute for summer. They also had a... Tabby, get uh, your nose out of there. Kind of a beige option. Mm -hmm. That I, you know, now that I'm happy with these, I think I'm going to try to grab a pair in the other color. It's been a long time since They're I've had cute. espadrilles. And they have would, a little wedge, yeah. wedginess to them, too. Yeah, they look... They look like they'll be good. And you can wear them with pants or a dress. Yeah. You, you have your... These will be my summer go-tos. Heidi's like, um, um, how is that relevant? They run full, so if you can slip your... If you do get it, uh, try it on in Costco before yeah. you take it home. Because these are just a little uh, slipping. What size me. did you... This is an eight. Oh, then I best get a seven yeah. and a half. Yeah, I, they, I don't know if they have oh. half sizes, but... Yeah, I would definitely try it in the, at the store, but they're great. Little boy. You're so soft. You know, sometimes Costco, though, is is a little variable in sizes. Like, I've yes. noticed when I buy, I, anytime I buy uh, bras there, they always yeah. come in a two-pack. And it never fails. One of the bras is a hair larger than the other bra. That's odd, isn't it? Yeah. Little boy. Little oh boy. <laughs> well, hey guys, what's up? I wanted to share with you all, I'm going to try on um, for you all, I've used this before, this is the PCA Skin Sheer Tint Broad Spectrum SPF 45 Water Resistant. Obviously, just a pea size amount left, so I don't know that I'm even going to get like a full, full, <clears throat> let's move a little closer full application, but let's just see how it goes on. The thing I like about this sunscreen, for those of you out there seeking a tinted sunscreen that is good for darker skin tones, consider this one. It blends sheer, but check out the tint. Kind of like, it reminds me of the same coloration of coats when it comes out. And if you've ever worn Coats, Coats is my other, Coats Natural Tint is the other one that I recommend for those of you with darker skin types looking for a tinted sunscreen. Oh, it feels really good too. No fragrance, good for oily prone skin, good for sensitive skin. You know though, the difference between this and Coats, Coats has that buttery consistency and it, it goes on and dries matte, but when you're putting it on your hands, it, it kind of has that slippery, buttery feel to it. This has more of a, and don't fear this, it has more of a feel of the dimethicone in it. Dimethicone is a fantastic ingredient. Love it. Not dangerous. Not going to clog your pores. Not, not anything that the internet hypes phobia around. None of that's true. Dimethicone, fantastic ingredient. 
um, but it has more, it has a unique feel to it in moisturizers. It's typically what's in oil-free moisturizers. Uh, it's very acne friendly. Um, and this has more of a dimethicone feel to it as opposed to Coats. Just that kind of, it's got a little bit of slip to it. Whereas Coats is more, more like, has a little bit of a hint of butter to it. But it still, it still goes on sort of sheer. Like this is not like full coverage or coverage or foundation or anything. It's just, it's just a sheer tint. Like you can see through it. That's what I mean by sheer tint. But the tint that it imparts will be more favorable to a darker skin type. But my mom wears this and loves it. And obviously she's almost done with it. So this is her favorite, favorite tinted sunscreen. Um, she's never worn Coats tinted sunscreen though. I think the color similar. The feel is different. Coats does not have the, the dimethicone slippery feel to it. But they're both excellent for oily prone, sensitive skin, rosacea prone skin, looking for a tinted sunscreen. And the reason I love tinted sunscreens is that they The reason I love tinted sunscreens, I was like looking on here because I was like, wait a minute, it's not on there and then I saw it, is that they have iron oxides, okay? So for those of you with hyperpigmentation, the thing that you need to be aware of is that certain wavelengths of visible light, so not ultraviolet light, but visible light, the light that you see with your eyes, certain wavelengths contribute to persistence of hyperpigmentation. Blue light, whenever whenever they're like making, making you fear blue light and light from the LEDs, they're talking about high, really, really the, the risk that we know associated with it is it contributes to persistence of hyperpigmentation. We don't really know anything about the effects of visible light on skin cancer or aging necessarily. We don't have that kind of information, but we do know that it contributes to persistence of hyperpigmentation. So if you've got melasma, if you've got acne that heals with a dark mark, that's you. And if you're a darker skin type, you are going to be more likely to be the type that's going to have those issues and need a good tinted sunscreen that's not gonna look ghostly white on you. So the iron oxides can provide protection against that, that, those wavelengths of visible light. Not only the iron oxides that make this, the iron oxides add pigment to this and make it, make it something that is bearable to wear if you are a darker skin type. Because the other, the other, the actual active sunscreen ingredients in this, the stuff that protects you from burning skin cancer and uh, aging, skin aging, is the zinc and titanium. Zinc and titanium, unlike chemical filters, also offer protection against those wavelengths of visible light. But if you're a darker skin type, and you go seeking zinc titanium exclusive sunscreens, you're gonna run into the white cast thing that is not always gonna be socially acceptable to sport. Some of you are comfortable with it and like it, but others don't, understandable. So you're gonna to wanna to look for, you're gonna to wanna to look for a tinted mineral sunscreen. And that is what, that is what uh, women of, men and women of color should try and seek for the best protection for their skin because their skin is not gonna burn necessarily can you can get a sunburn for sure but your overarching immediate concern is not always burning but rather persistence of your of hyperpigmentation concerns whether it be healing acne or whatnot so um you you should look for mineral exclusive sunscreens but bearing in mind in your brain that when you when you buy them you're signing up for that white cast so choosing one that's got a tint in it a tint that works with your skin type it's that's what you need to look for. And I think this is a good one. This and the coats, the coats natural tinted. Does that make sense? I'll list this down below for you guys, um, but my mom wears it. I mean, she's obviously not, you know, a darker darker skin type, but I have friends who are, who are African-American, much darker skin type than me, obviously, who enjoy the sunscreen and get along with it well. So I, I recommend it. Comment below though, which ones you guys uh, use, those of you who are, who are a darker skin type. I know many of you enjoy the Coats one that I've recommended, uh, but this, this is another one. It's on the pricier side. The best tinted sunscreen in the drugstore is actually the Cetaphil 
SPF 20. It's called Cetaphil Redness Relief, but it's kind of got an, a tint to it that is more suitable for really, really fair complexion who has redness. So people with rosacea, that is, that's who that sunscreen is intended for this. So the tint in that is suited for people with rosacea, which is, you know, very fair, very fair skin people with, with redness, not darker skin types with hyperpigmentation. So that, that tint in that particular affordable drugstore sunscreen that is fantastic, probably not gonna work for your skin type. The other option though is, um, although I never, I never know how this alters the SPF of things. So, you know, I say take this with a grain of salt. The other option is of course to add pigment to, to a mineral sunscreen of your choosing. Dermablend makes some of those pigments that you can add and you can kind of t tint your sunscreen. But honestly, I don't know. I don't know what that does to the final SPF. I can't imagine that it, it alters it drastically, but I don't know how much of the iron oxide you get from those little droplets. I don't know if you, I don't know if you distribute them as evenly as is mixed in with, with a product like this to get consistent visible light coverage from the iron oxide component of the tinted drop, if that makes sense. But you're still getting the visible light protection. If you, if you choose to tint a mineral sunscreen, which you most likely are, if you choose to tint a mineral sunscreen, you're still getting that visible light protection from the mineral sunscreen that's gonna be casty by itself. Hopefully that makes sense. Dermablend though, I recommend Dermablend. I mean, you guys always ask me for makeup recommendations. I'm like, mm, I don't know. But uh, I always recommend Dermablend to patients with like vitiligo. I mean, it's very high coverage, but the ingredients are good. Um, they're not, they don't have any exotic essential oils or anything that's gonna be irritating or cause problems. I mean, anything can be irritating, but they're no like, oh, they're no red, there are no red flag ingredients in Dermablend makeup. Uh, and I recommend, I mean, it really does. I mean, it's really heavy coverage. Like, I mean, we're talking, if you have a tattoo that you need to cover for work, Dermablend. Um, and so that's, that's what I typically recommend to people who are seeking cosmetic coverage. It covers acne really well. Um, so it's not just makeup for darker skin types, it's makeup for all, all skin types. And I recommend um, if you have, Tybee's just taking that. If you have a, they have a store locator feature on their website, I recommend going in and having the color matching. You can go online and they've got like, pick, pick your shade out of this lineup of ladies. And not sure, you know, it'll tell you what, what foundation or what drops suit you. Um, but that, that always seems like kind of a, kind of a lottery, you know, trying to match yourself to a computer image. I don't know. Sometimes it, it works well, but like I said, I don't, I don't wear foundation, but, uh, you know, I understand that many of you do. I'm not, you know, it definitely, it definitely enhances quality of life for many people. So even though I don't, really have much experience with it personally to kind of guide you. I mean, you won't see me doing makeup tips here unless, unless you just want to laugh. Um, but that would be the brand of, of foundations that I feel are pretty good and do a good job covering stuff up. I think I'm gonna make myself some green tea. Oh, and my other big plan for this afternoon is to get my planner up uh, uh, up to date. I fell behind last. I typically do my planner on Saturdays and Sundays. I typically lay out my week. And last week, because we were at the beach uh, for the race, I didn't do it. And this week I was like, eh, where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> so I need to catch up on my planner. <laughs> um, I just heat up like, I don't know, a quarter of a cup of almond milk, unsweetened almond milk from Costco or you know whatever whatever opaque beverage that you want oat milk nut milk are we allowed to call these milks <laughs> or, or dairy milk true milk all right I just nuke it in the microwave um, for a minute and we have one of these little electric kettles here that I put to boil and I repurposed a, one of these little tea tins to store some of my Four Sigmatics green tea over here at my mom's house. 
It is the matcha green tea with lion's mane and ginger. So I just add like a teaspoon and a half and I add in the stevia packets. So I add two teaspoons uh, to, to the green tea. And a serving of this is like a, one to two tablespoons, I think, but I like doing teaspoons. And if you're curious how it tastes, it tastes just like a subtle floral, fruity floral taste. I think if you added a full tablespoon, that might be a little heavy handed, honestly. Um, but it's no, it does not taste like perfume. I was really suspicious that I was gonna taste like perfume when I first uh, got it, and it doesn't. Mmm, that's really good. that I cubed it up and dusted it with paprika and garlic powder garlic powder so I have that on a bed of the um, Costco organic mixed power greens they're very good uh, some cherry tomatoes some sauerkraut and some steamed broccoli and a little bit of quinoa it's just keen <laughs> I like your blue shirt it's pretty <laughs> Spring. Looks nice. Especially spring, right? Yeah. It's yeah. going to go really good when your hair is completely gray. For you, your, your col the colors of your wardrobe are going to take on a whole new pop. That's what it is. Now that your hair is more white, that is really popping more. And your glasses. Yeah, because I've never been a blue person. Yeah, because you're not a winter, as you used to say yeah. adamantly. From the, what was it called? Color Me Beautiful? Mm-hmm. You are there's a, autumn. Uh, newer, there's a new wave of that now. It's called, um, oh, dress your, I don't know what it's called, but it, it's just like Color Me Beautiful. Uh -huh. It's a new, a new idea. Yeah, when I was a child, my mother was really rigid about the Color Me Beautiful thing. I worked really well. And it was a good so, way to uh, play. Have your yeah. wardrobe all work? When it came time to get her a gift, if it was going to be some kind of a wearable thing, I was worried. Is this in the? Is this a fall color? Yeah, I mean, I was in autumn. I don't know if I. I guess now I'm going to become a. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Tybee is definitely a winter because winters are white, you know, have like either blonde hair and, and light eyes uh, or are, you know, gray. Tybee's definitely a winter. A winter. He wants to try out for Game of Thrones. He wants to be one of the wolves, yeah. one of the dire wolves. Don't you, Ty? But anyways, guys, I'm going to conclude the vlog here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen, sunscreen and subscribe. subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.